I've been scaling things back lately, rethinking the whys and hows of everything we've been putting our hands to over the years in homeschool and life. Constantly shifting my focus and bringing me back to our core intentions of raising curiously creative, wonderfully compassionate, faith-filled, love-walking kids. We've been trying to make our way to wonder spaces for a while now. While children's museums and amusement parks may be the way for others, open spaces with steady pace and calming environments and interactive art installations are more our speed. Experiences that are thought-provoking and less about entertainment and more about wonder. We are the Falco family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. We're a family of five driven by purpose and fueled by love. We decided to trade in the traditional school life for a life where every day is an adventure of faith and love. From a small photography business grew a love of memory keeping and filmmaking that turned into a full blown dream of becoming a family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. So we're learning to document our adventures in homeschool, business, and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. There's a quote by James Baldwin. The point is to get your work done and your work is to change the world. I've found that creativity really begins with wonder and it's fueled by the fire that curiosity provides. It is the thing that I am asked most often how do you raise kids to be more curious, to be more creative? I'm not sure that I know the complete answer to that just yet, but I've found that creativity is not an end result set by our own finite imaginations, but rather an outlook that I cultivate, a perspective that I help to shape and an innate sense of wonder that I resolve to keep alive. So I've learned to do a few things that help keep the wonder alive in our lives. So number one, I set the pace and I can purpose to slow things down. Setting the pace for myself, for my kids, for my family has always been the first step in giving space to a wonderful life. This world moves fast and quick. It is a whirlwind of thoughts, ideas, emotions, impulses, and decisions. How easy it is to get caught up in the storm of life and miss the beauty that surrounds us. Which brings me to the second thing that I've learned. Give them space to observe. Observation, consideration, and freedom to explore, it's a lost art, but it's a necessary element of creating wonderful experiences in life. Making room by giving them time to consider their own thoughts, that's key for us. I've learned to share my thoughts and feelings with them without projecting and offering them up as their own. There is an essence to life that is felt and experienced rather than spoken or explained. I want them to explore that essence and incline their hearts and minds to that very thing beyond the weight and the worries of the world. To teach this in our homeschool and life brings me to number three, uh, to document using cameras, drawing and painting, binoculars and journals, Documenting their experiences and their findings help them to learn to change their perspective, to adjust the way that they see things. The ability to see a box beyond its current state is creativity in its most basic and brilliant form. Robin Conley Downs says, when you replace judgment with curiosity, everything changes. It's important for my kids to learn to shift and change their perspective because somehow we've become so quick to pass judgment in moments 
where we should give voice to our curiosities, wondering if questions could lead to careful consideration, and if those careful considerations quite possibly could lead to compassionate answers. If a child is to keep alive his inborn sense of wonder, he needs the companionship of at least one adult who can share it, rediscovering with him the joy, excitement, and mystery of the world that we live in. That is me. If no one else in this world, I want to be that one adult that they can share that sense of wonder with. Because wonder must be interactive. I wish I had more words to express my feelings here, the connection between energy, motion, wonder, and creativity, but again, I'm having trouble finding the words. And that brings me to the fourth thing that I've learned to do, which is encourage their curiosities with a big book of questions. This one is so incredibly simple and yet so overlooked. Learning to speak the phrase, I wonder. It opens up the door to coloring their curiosities with their own shade of paint. I wonder who. I wonder what. I wonder when. I wonder why. I wonder where. I wonder how. These statements establish their own personal sense of wonder. Taking those statements of wonder and building a book of questions as you collect them. Then I encourage them to make it their mission to explore and discover any answers to those questions. These installations were all incredibly thought-provoking to me. The thank you bags. While the artist considers consumerism and environmental impact of excessive plastic, I cannot help but think of the wasteland in education. Thinking of all the things that we often fill their bags to capacity with, a nothingness that oftentimes leaves them little room for wonder, curiosity, creativity, innovation, purposeful knowledge, and the wisdom that will sustain them. I want to make sure that there's plenty of room in their bags, plenty of room for those very things. We enjoyed our time at Wonder Spaces Philadelphia, but more than anything, I enjoy any time that I get to consider the massive role that our sense of wonder plays in our homeschooling lives. And I thought I would share, because life is so very full of lessons, and our goal, as always, is to live and to learn. With all the love, Serena. <laughs>